What better universe to explore than Star Wars? Seriously. Everyone remembers from the movies these great planets and iconic locations. Well, in Star Wars The Old Republic, you will get to go and visit these planets that we so dear and love, like Tatooine and Hoth, for example. One of the great things about our planets and locations is not only will you see planets that you're familiar with with the Knights of the Old Republic, but also new planets that we developed that have never seen before in the expanded universe will be shown in our game. One way to get around to these planets is your personal ship. Think about it as your mobile home in space. Your personal ship, our ships dedicated to each class will have its own unique ship that they can use and explore the universe, which is pretty damn cool. Now, one of the good things about it is you can see this, galac this galaxy map, which you can get on your ship and allows you to travel to different planets. Not only that, it can get you into space combat, like you're seeing here. So great uh, map that you can explore the universe with. You can get into combat battles, like you see here. Now, many of you think, well, these planets like Tatooine and Hoth are huge. How am I going to get around? Well, you may have known about the previous uh, releases of vehicles that we've shown, but we're also going to show some brand new vehicles that we're going to show you. So for the higher level gameplay that we have. There you go. From the forest moons to Tatooine. So now, these are really cool in the game. Trust me, they're awesome. And the neat thing about it is like, with Luke Skywalker, the land speeder at his time was pretty common. But back 3,000 years ago, it wasn't. So you needed the land speeder. It was more of a higher level type gameplay and good drivers you have to have for that kind of a vehicle. So we're reserving those for the higher level gameplay in our game. Now, remember that the vehicles will change probably as we get to launch. So what you see here are just preliminary versions of what we're going to have. But when you get to the game when we launch, they'll probably be even better looking and cooler than what you see here. Let's Dallas talk about progression. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Um, Richard Vogel, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, again, I mentioned progression. Um, uh, this is a role-playing game, so, so you're going to be progressing throughout the game. It's one of the tenets of making a truly great RPG. We also showed you a little bit of the type of progression that you choose yourself uh, through the choices you make in your story. It actually changes not only your character, uh, the way the story unfolds, but actual aspects of your gameplay. But on top of that, we also have hundreds of really amazing powers, abilities that you get, tremendous uh, armor and weaponry upgrades, ridiculous cool looking stuff. So if you want to take a look at some of the visuals of what you might look like in the game as you progress. We're showing a few of them up here, but if you want to really see the full depth of it, make sure you go to the website StarWarsTheOldRepublic.com. We've been releasing progression videos um, every few weeks, and we've showed many of the classes and, and what they can look like at the lower levels, what they look like at the highest levels. So if you really want to know how to look awesome, how to impress your friends, um, uh, check it out on the website. But last but not least, we want to talk a little bit about combat. Now, we've we certainly talked a little bit about this in the past. We've said, you know, in Star Wars The Old Republic, we want to make sure that combat is evocative of the movies, that it is fast-paced, action-packed. Um, it really feels visceral and, and smooth. Um, on top of that, though, we've added something that is very much a Bioware tenet. We've added companion characters. And uh, James Olin is going to talk to you a little bit about companion characters generally, as well as companions in combat. Mr. Olin. All right, thanks, Dallas. Oh. Thanks, Dallas. Um, so companion characters have been an integral part of Bioware role-playing games for more than 15 years. For those of you who are familiar with Bioware role-playing games since Baldur's Gate through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic all the way to modern games like Mass Effect and Dragon Age, they've always been a huge part of our games. And they're going to be a huge part of Star Wars The Old Republic as well. In fact, if you think about it, companion characters are kind of huge to the Star Wars movies. Han Solo has Chewbacca and uh, Luke Skywalker has R2-D2. So being such an important part of our game, um, such an important feature, uh, we're always looking at ways to polish, improve, um, and make changes to companion characters as, the, as our game develops. So um, most of these changes come from feedback that we receive from players, fans, such as yourself, that are currently playing our game, lucky enough to right now. Although do not, do not violate your NDA right now. You can't tell people you're playing yet and uh, obviously internal sources as well. So there's, uh, you know, we've been making a lot of different changes, some small, some big, 
some of the uh, smaller changes we've been doing to companion characters. So right now when you play the game, you can actually change what your companion character is wearing, um, his weapons and all the rest of uh, his equipment. Um, but we've been getting a lot of feedback that says that players want to actually be able to change what their companion character looks like. So we decided to give them that uh, ability. Um, so you'll notice that, uh, for example, that up here, um, a Twi'lek, a Twi'lek uh, can have many different kinds of skin colors, whether it's red or yellow or blue. So we're giving players, and this is just one example, the ability to change, for example, the skin color of their companion character. A minor tweak, but just to kind of show you guys how the game is developing as we continue to get feedback. Now we've also done some much more significant changes to companion characters, and uh, I kind of have to be a tease because I can't really go into too much detail, but we'll be talking about it in a few weeks. But basically we've been taking feedback from our fans and some of the players um, that has said that they really want to be able to have the ability to customize and adjust the AI, the artificial intelligence of their companion characters in the same way that they've been able to do in other games that Bioware's made, such as Dragon Age. They've also expressed the desire to really be able to have a lot more control, the depth of control that people are used to in, in Bioware RPGs. So we've been making those changes, um, and we're going to be testing them, and uh, we're really quite excited. So I can't wait till we can talk about it in the future. Anyways, that's it for companion characters. I think we're going to uh, Q&A now.